2010, I was doing web development and my business ran out of money. And I had this uh, girl I was uh, in love with living with me. And I came home from, from a very challenging day with business in trouble. And, uh, I, and she announced she was moving out. And I uh, was desperate to get her back. And she ended up finding somebody new and, and with the catch that he lived in my building on the same floor. And so I'm sitting in this like apartment with no money and uh, no hope and heartbroken. And I'm like, I got to make something out of myself. And I had this dream of this junior market that I, I knew that a lot of people were successful in it and that I could too. And the thing that I did better than other people was making websites. I wasn't great at it, but I was good enough. And the junior mar resource market is like, it's kind of like forgotten by technology and forgotten by, uh, you know, the promise of the internet. So I was able to do some things that maybe, um, maybe now we couldn't do, but at that time there was an opening for a better information platform on the site. And I was very lucky to be able to do it with great people. And I'm thrilled with where it is now as uh, the best place for information in the junior market in Canada. You know, all these wounds are self-inflicted, but a couple of big mistakes. Like one time I was on a, a trip with a really famous mining icon, copper icon, and a, one guy showed him drill results of a, of a deal. And the, the icon, he said, oh, that's impressive. And so we were on a, on a plane together. And after the flight was done, I called my broker right away and I put in like 75% of the money I had into the buying this random stock that these guys were gossiping about. Cause like, I thought I was on the inside. Well, like it was a four or $5 stock at the time. It quickly went to 80 cents and I went way too concentrated on it. It was just like, it was like a dumb impulse purchase just because somebody says something doesn't make it you know, great uh, stocks. At that time, it was the end of the commodities boom and didn't matter what you own, it was going down. So it just taught me to bet small and uh, be able to fight another day and, uh, you know, to listen to what important people had to say, but also just put it together with other information, you know. But lots of stories like that. You cannot be in this game and not lose money, but when you win, it's bigger than you lose. Well, I had... This friend, Rob McLeod, um, you know, I was deliberating doing this K92 mining deal at 35 cents with a full warrant at 50 cents. And Rob, my friend said, no, that's a good project. And it was just the nod I needed to participate in that deal. And, um, you know, the, I think it was three bucks when I was selling out of it. And it was like a 15 X or something with the warrants, but they ended up stock going to $10. And I have had a lot of situations like that. Some deals, like I helped start a mining company, which we, Lithium X Energy, which was a, like a 250 times return. And in the mining space, um, you know, there's been a, a handful, probably a dozen of really good outcomes. The best outcomes came like being at the market low in the sentiment. And then, you know, quickly that attitude changes. I've said a hundred times, it's like a pouring a whiskey bottle into a shot glass. But like in early 2016, when gold moved from 1080 to 1400, Vancouver stocks went bananas. And all the deals I was in in 2015, were five to 10 times the money and nothing had changed other than the sentiment. So um, I feel like right now it's like, it's not full despair, but it's like an interesting time. Things are getting cheaper and I'm cautiously waiting in again. Uh, well, the first thing, you know, to, to learn, um, the, coming to a conference is a better investment than buying a stock. It's, it's a good investment to lose money if you learn something. And like the most important thing is just like having understanding what you own in context of other com companies like it. You want to be able to learn, uh, you want to be able to use CDAR and CO.ca to understand what people are saying about it. Oftentimes you want to do what the opposite of what the crowd is saying, but you want to be able to understand in their management discussion and analysis of their financial statements every quarter, how much money they have, what's their financial runway like, and what's the cost of, uh, the shares are required, understand the cap table. You just really want to get an information edge uh, and know what you own. And ultimately, like if you're young, it's a great place to get ahead and to build a career. Uh, it's fantastic. It's more more treacherous if you're trying to preserve your capital and don't want to commit your, your time and passion into it. So I would say you can win big in this space if you're obsessed with it. And that's that's what my experience has shown. Okay, so this is my mentor, Joe Martin. Uh, Joe gave me my first opportunity in the market here with the Cambridge House Conference. He hired me to do some marketing. 
It was an incredible experience because you learned, you know, who the CEOs were, who the experts were, and what the trends were happening. It's all here in this show and putting that all together. And that's why everybody keeps coming back every year. But the, but the, the best thing I learned from you, Joe, was when you said, promote the promoters, keep them coming back. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I owe a lot, a lot to you. And you Thank were you for an absolutely wonderful guy to work with. Uh, <laughs> you are too, still are. We had a lot of fun together. Yes, we did. Yeah, I'm very proud to see what uh, Jay's doing with the business today. <clears throat> yeah, he's a big, but somebody had to start it, and you were part of that start. Well, you, I think you were starting to 20 years before we showed up, but <laughs> Joe's a legend, uh, former owner of BC Business Magazine, and uh, just a dear friend. And part of the beauty of coming back to these shows is the relationships you build through time with people like Joe. And there's been times when I definitely tried Joe's patience. I appreciate the benefit of time. Uh, thank you for all your patience and forgiveness. It's been Joe. a pleasure. Love you, man. Love you, my friend. Okay. There's only three reasons the stock goes up. Discovery, uh, sentiment change, like commodity price rising, or promotion. That's it. The rest of the time, gravity. What else? Uh, promotion is incredibly important. Management have to have alignment of interests and you know like some people if their stock gets cratered you know they'll they'll make bring new money in at terms that are destructive to the share price and the value of existing holders and you can't fault them when they don't have access to money but some teams just fight to keep the share price alive and to keep previous shareholders going and the people i just saw dave lotan walking around like there's a guy's not selling warrants and he's got no, you know, big incentive in the own, he buys the shares and finding people that treat the shares like gold, that's the hardest part in the space. But uh, if you're around when one of those three things happens, you're going to like this business. Right now I'm working on, you know, continuing to find cool investment ideas and to be plugged into the space. And I use CEO.ca every day for that. I probably, I'm a power user, right? I love CEO.ca. Um, I'm writing on thebigscore.com, a series of stories, sharing what I've learned and stories that inspire me, the human stories and behind wealth creation in the Canadian market. I love doing that. So I'm trying to write cool stories. I'm trying to find good investment ideas and uh, support people and hopefully make a buck, you know, but thebigscore.com and ceo.ca slash at Tommy. That's where to find me. <laughs>